Hey guys, it's Amy from McCormick's and Alan. Hello. <laughs> so we're here today. We wanted to do a little bit of a design video and go over some of the questions that we have that some of us aren't um, always willing to ask or we're afraid to ask or things like that and just get the design process started for you. I know a lot of us have gotten our shows for the fall. We know what the theme is. We know what the music is, but where do I go from there? So real quick, let's talk about where Alan comes from because he has a really extensive background in color garden. We like to brag about it and we think it's pretty amazing. So he's from Chesterton, Indiana, and he marched with the 91 and 92 Cavaliers. So home team for us in Illinois. <laughs> And then he went on to march with the Guardsmen in 1985 and Miller's Blackhawks in 1990 for the winter seasons. And he began teaching in 1988. Um, during that time, he's taught at Lowell High School in Indiana, Lincoln Way Community High School in Illinois, and most recently, Lake Central High School in Indiana. And during that, he produced a ton of groups that won state and multiple awards. In 2012, he brought home the silver medal at WGI. And now he's hanging out with us at McCormick's and working with us full time. And he designs flags and uniforms for our clients and spends time in his spare time, what little spare time he has, helping some of the Midwest Color Guard groups, which we love having as well. So that's where Alan comes from. We like to talk about it a lot. I'm always impressed by all of his credentials. So, um, but yeah, we're back to that where we know what the show is. We know what we're doing, but where do I begin? I'm, I've had auditions. I have the show picked and I'm getting ready to start rehearsals, but what do I do? Uh, where do I find flags? Where do I find costumes? And how do I get started? So we're going to pick Alan's brain today and let him talk about all of this. So how do I get started, Alan? Well, when, how I usually start is I always think about the costume first. Because to me, that's the most important part that's going to set your tone and your look for your color guard. And that's always the one that takes the longest to get. Um, so we, here at McCormick's, we have digital printing. And we do um, some custom costumes as well. And we always look to, to try to fit and make the costume fit your show. So I do tons of research. Research, research, research. Well, whether it's fashion, history, depending on your show, what type you're looking for, avant-garde, anything that's going to make you stand out. And that's what I think the color guard needs to do. The color guard needs to be the wow moment of the band. So we usually just start with that. That's how I start. And then we ask colors. What colors are you into? What colors are you looking for? What are your band uniforms colors? Because sometimes you get stuck with some not pretty band uniforms. Let me tell you. When I was at Lake Central, I started, they had powder blue. Nothing goes with powder blue. So we tried our best and we made things work. And then they finally got new uniforms and we were all excited. So, but that's, that's the key is making sure everything is cohesive and then you get to pick fabrics and colors. Colors are great. Um, I always have a color wheel by me and it just helps the fact that you can tell what colors go together, what's the complementary color, what colors look great together and stuff like that. You can do monochromatic and stuff like that. So it just helps me know what colors I want to use. And can I find that anywhere or? Yeah, you can go on the internet and find, put in color wheel and it, it can come right up. And I have it by my desk all the time and I'm constantly looking at it. So it just helps me with color combinations and what you think goes together, may go together, may not go together and take a risk. Don't play anything safe. That's my motto. I always like putting orange and fuchsia together and different things. It just makes things happen. Hey, Paul, I saw you said <laughs> hi during it, so... So, and then I try to find then, you know, after I've done my research and I pick my colors, I try to think of a silhouette that I like. And I just start drawing and um, do I want a dress? Do I want a unitard? Do I want both? You know, that's the thing. People are changing left and right. Everybody wants three and four costumes these days. You don't have to. But um, we just like, you know, we'll do what you want, what you want us to do. And we like to do that. So, um yeah, it's just picking the silhouette and then, you know, placing fabrics and then, you know, getting what you like. 
that goes with the show, whether it's a vampire theme or a Queen Elizabeth or a Space Age. It's just, you know, finding that silhouette that will make you happy. And, like, what if I don't know what kind of silhouette I want? What if I am just completely lost? And what if unitards scare me? Because I have a big... I have big children on my color guard sometimes. Not everyone's 110 pounds. So what do I do if I want a unitard, but I just don't know where to design for every body type, and I don't even know how to find it? Well, you can call us. And I've had girls range from the skinny minis, as we call them, to the bigger girls, and we put them in unitards. It's about the color and the fit and the, the silhouette. You always want, you can maximize the, the flaws by making things darker through the, minimize the, minimize the flaws, <laughs> through um, the color of where you put it, and the fabrics sometimes too. Velvet is a great hider. Um, it's, it's got texture and it's got you know some density, not density, but it's got the plushness, so it, it's a little bit more forgiving as opposed to a shiny spandex. And, um, and it's not always the unitard and the design, it's what you put underneath it. And that, I'm a firm believer of no matter what size, you wear a body shaper and another unitard because it will smooth things out and make everything become much better. And that's from the size two to the larger sizes. And it just, it makes them comfortable and it just holds things in and shapes things, makes and smooths things out. And I don't mean just a, you know, like a body stocking. I'm talking a body shaper like Spanx and then a unitard. And sometimes they even tell them to go a size smaller. It just helps, it just helps things go. And so don't be afraid. You know, use, you know, use darker colors. It usually help on a um, larger person. And if you do different costumes throughout a guard, don't make one costume the big girl costume and, you know, the, you know put the skinniest girls in the nothing costume. Mix them up so the larger girls don't think that, oh, that's the big girl costume. And the smaller, you know, get they get the little, you know, oh, the, the tight with the, you know, they have the hole, the cutout on the side and stuff like that. You know, mix them up so nobody feels out of place. And you can always add a skirt to a unitard if you need to, if you know, if you feel that route, and that's nothing wrong with that. And we do that a lot. It's just, you know, it's what you are comfortable with and what your kids are comfortable with. But don't be afraid to take risks. Because risk, you know, because they pay off in the end. You know, they may not always, not always be the right choice in the beginning, but you can always fix it. Alyssa Miles has a good question. Um, since you were talking about different costumes, she says, what um, would the pros and cons be of doing different costumes and like when should you do different costumes when should you do the same costume that's always confusing um different costumes i think are great when um you know, like for period things like the 1950s or something you can do different types of dresses of different prints um as long as your your color palette is tight you know it's like you don't want to do um a color palette that has a wide range when you're doing different costumes you want to use the same pattern and the same fab you know same patterns and prints and all the costumes maybe not in the same place but it just keeps your um color palette and your design a little bit more cohesive and and sometimes you also do same silhouette but different colors right, right. that's a way to do it too yeah you can do it that way too i did that at lake central we call it the skittles year and we had 10 different colors of um unitards out there but they were all the same cut and same shape and um, it just, they look, it looks cohesive because they're all the same from head to toe and I went with the show. And Bobby from Hawaii says, aloha. Oh, hello, hey, Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> Hope you're staying safe away from the lava. <laughs> um, Michael Saitlin has a question. Um, he says, what um, did you have your color guard kids, kids wear on their feet? So do you go barefoot? Do you use shoes? What do you do? Um, at Lake Central, we were blessed enough that we always were on astrograss, and the girls preferred to go barefoot. Um, I know a lot of schools don't allow that anymore. So um, we do a new, um, usually a nude shoe or a black shoe. Um, or we painted our shoes a lot of times. Um, like I said, the uh, Skittles here at Lake Central, their shoes were the same color as their unitard because when, you, when your shoes match your legs, your legs look longer and people don't draw attention to your feet. So that's a, you know, a good dance secret. You know, if you watch the ballroom dancers when they're dancing, they always have like a nude shoe on and it makes their legs look longer. There's a reason for it. So there's a great product out there that you can call McCormick's and we can tell you where to get it. Um, that's a shoe paint that you, it comes in many colors that you can mix 
and it just um, it'll you know paint the shoe and you have to keep painting throughout the season because it does you know rub off and stuff like that but it it'll match and it'll, it just makes a uniform look a cohesive look and it'll make your kids look taller and a side note to that, McCormick's just came out with a new shoe this year, and it's tan. Uh, really nice fit, nice and sleek, fits to the foot, form-fitting, slip-on, much uh, very similar to a jazz shoe, and it's washable. And the price point, I think, is twenty seven ninety nine. So really great price point and tan. I know when I taught, I used to take the unitards. Uh, I was a big unitard person, and I would cut the heel out and do a stirrup over the shoe. And I felt like for me, that kind of elongated that pant. It kept it a little smoother and made it hid their feet a little bit. I don't know. I didn't ever do black. What are your thoughts on like tan versus black? When do you do tan? When do you do black? I do black when I have black on the bottom. Most other time that I do tan or I paint. Um, and the plus, the other thing plus of with the McCormick shoe, and it comes in men's extended sizes. It goes all the way up to a size 16, I think. Because I know, you know, the guards are getting more boys and men in them. So we thought that if we extend the size, it gets it a lot easier because we're always asking, do you have a larger size than the boys? And now we do. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, so I see we have another question there. From Rich Hernandez, yes. Is there a current trend with flags right now? Are there pros and cons to digital versus sewn? Um, you know, I think everybody's going to the, the printed. Um, and I think it's because it's inexpensive, uh, most of the time quick turnaround. Here at McCormick's, we do a printed flag in seven days or less. So that's a good thing once you, you know, we get the design approved. But I, it depends on the look. Like, I think swing flags are great um, sewn or hybrids. And we'll talk about hybrids in a minute. And printed are good if you know you're on a limited budget and um, you can you can get away with it. But you know I think when printed first came out, it was the in thing, and they were more expensive than what they are now. So not a lot, a lot of not a lot of people did them. And now that they're they're cost friendly and that type of thing, everybody's doing them. So you know yeah, you can get whatever on you. But my favorite are hybrids. And here at McCormick's, we do great hybrids. And what a hybrid is, is a printed flag with a um, with other fabrics involved, whether it's lames, crystal clear, um, some crepes. And it just, it gives it the flag a different view, a different look. And it gives it, it's not just your plain old printed. They're a little bit more expensive and the turnaround time is a little bit more. It's about three weeks for a turnaround time, but they make them more special. It's not just a printed flag. So though, I mean, we're getting, trying to get, um, doing, I'm doing more hybrids these days. And to me, they're a little more exciting and they give a little bit more out. Does that answer your question, Rich? And I think it makes the image pop a little bit more because you're able to frame that image or a point that you really want to see. So the hybrids are always a nice addition to the program because you're going to be able to highlight that image, make it a little bit more fancy. I know we've had that question as well. How do I design on a budget but still look fancy or look that I have a little bit more appeal? So um, I think the hybrids are a great option to the printed flag right now. We also do a line called the embellishment line too. So you can add a piece of lame either on the side, bottom, top, or corner. And that's a price point friendly way to add a little bit of sparkle, uh, but still do that printed flag price point. So you Rich know, says you answered his question. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. And at McCormick's, we do offer eight different shapes in our printed flags. So it's not just the standard drop rectangle anymore. So we do have a hook shape. Um, if you go on our website, mccormicksnet.com, you can see them there. So we have a lot of flags. We're revamping the website right now, getting our new catalog up. So, but our, all our shapes are on there. We can do any printed flag in that shape. So that is a great thing. It's not just the standard drop rectangle anymore because, you know, it gets a little boring. Why, yeah, why would you, when would you do these different shapes? Like... Um, the different shapes happen depends on your print. That's a big thing, you know, because a lot of times the prints are going to be different and, you know, it'll make you stand out. Everybody does drop rectangle because it's easy. You're familiar with it. Um, one of our top sellers last year was um, our hook shape. It's like a tail. Uh, tail. We call it the tail in house. But um, that was one of our big sellers last year. So we're really excited that we can offer that. And don't be afraid. Take, like I said earlier, take some risks. You know, don't be afraid. Don't be the same old, same old. Don't blend. Stand out in the crowd. 
So how do I find an image for a printed flag? I go to Shutterstock or I go to Dreamstime or these stock sites and I see all these really great images and how do I know that it's going to make a great flag? How do I pick the it image? Well, that, that's a hard one because some you never know until we render it. We do digital renderings, so you will get to see what your flag looks like um, before we even start to make it. And that, that way you can get approval if you like, if you want it bigger, if you want it smaller, the print. Um, here we have McCormick's, we have some great graphics teams and they use um, some of the you know, latest technology in making the flags and our, the print process that we have gives the best saturation and it makes us the brightest colors that you can get. So, you know, it's a little bit of trust with us trying to make the right, with us making the right decisions, but we won't steer you wrong at McCormick's. We will always do the best for the customer and do right by the customer. So like a lot of times people will talk about a spin spot. What is a spin spot? I have no idea. Okay. The spin spot is if you, you know, you have the pull of the flag and then you have the flag coming out. The spin spot is the part by the pole and up the middle. Um, the great, if you can go, you know, if you want to go on YouTube and look for Blue Coast the last couple of years, their jagged, um, jagged line show. If you look at that flag and you get mesmerized by the way it spins, that's the spin spot. So that's where you want your image to be so you can see it. And that's, that's where you want it. Yeah, it's going to go out and around, but that is what we call the spin spot. And like on a rifle, it's right in the middle under the bolt, you know, on a saber. It's um, right, you know, where the, it's the spin spot. It's, you know, depending <laughs> where the weight is, it's all a little bit different. But um, we all know where it is when we can see it. So that's why, you know, we always say we're, we're going to put that image, you know, that best image, we're going to lay it right in that um, template or the shape that you like. Um, Don Wild wants to know about swing fla flags. What are the common sizes? When should you use them? What about the printed swing flags? Um, I, me personally, my swing flags are always big. I you like the bigger the better. I mean, five. Our girls use five foot poles, and we would go out to like ninety six. You know, we would use big swing flags. Our co most common size here at McCormick's is forty four by seventy, um, but you can get bigger without a problem. We can, you know, we can do any size, any shape, anything you need. And um, printed, you know, once again, it's it's a choice. Though our printed start at forty nine ninety nine, mm -hmm. but you know, my favorite thing is we do um, hybrids. And if you get our new catalog or go on our website, we have what we call the rapid hybrids. So it's a price point friendly hybrid that you has that you can use fabric and print in it. Um, there's a couple shapes in there um, that we can do, and it just alleviates. You pick the print, and then you know pick the colors, and we lay it out, and um, you can see what it looks like. There's two swing flags yeah. in the rapid hybrid section, and then there's a, quite a few of the 36 by 54 size. And the neat thing about them is they start at 39.99. So for the longest time, a lot of people said, I can't afford a hybrid. I can't do hybrids. I want them. They're gorgeous, but I can't do it. Now you can, and it's so simple. Pick an image, pick some colors, put it together, and done, so. And as far as sewn swing flags, I think, you know, it's all a choice. Um, they're, gonna, they're going to be a little bit more expensive because they're a little more, um, they have a little more time put into them with all the piecing and stuff like that. But you can get different looks with everything. Like, I've always done um, sewn swing flags. It's just, just the look that I preferred, but you don't have to. And you know, now times are different and the printing's cheaper and you can do the hybrids, you know? So I think, you know, hybrids are the best of both worlds. You get sewn, you get the fabric choices, and then you get the print. And um, that's where we, that's what, that's my personal opinion. And we have different shape options for printed swing flags yes. too, just like our regular size. Yes, we do. I think there's six of those, but if there's a shape you don't like, we can uh, we can give you a shape that you do like. Mm -hmm. And Joshua Reeves is asking, is there such a thing as hybrid backdrops similar to hybrid flags? Not yet. That is <laughs> smart. <laughs> um, we'll put that one you in our back later. pocket. If so. you need hybrid backdrops, though, give us a call. And we we have an amazing crew here, and we can make it happen. So...
Aaron will come up with something for you. Um, we got a question as a write-in from Melissa in Kansas asking about how do you keep away from clashing flag silks when I'm choosing them? Um, go back to the color wheel. That's, you know, one of your, one. this is like the biggest thing that I have between my swatches and my color wheel. You know, and um, have a color story. You know, I'll go back to the Lake Central show that I did with the Skittles is I had all, I had a board, a color board, and I learned this in college with costuming and stuff. You have, you have your colors out and you see what the colors that you're using and you can always, you know, before you start making any decision, pick the colors you want and see what happens, you know? And it's, once again, don't be afraid to take risks just because, you know, neon does go, I love neon yellow and purple or neon green and purple. Those are two, like, people don't think, eh, but they go together. If you want that quick impact and stuff like that, that's the thing. And um, just have a color story. Have your color board in front of you. I carry that around for weeks um, with trying to get all the right colors. And because I'm, you know, color guard directors can be crazy. Yes, we all can, and I'll admit to it. And just trying to get all those colors together. And it's not so much, I don't think things clash if you choose right. You know, and obviously that's part of the battle. And oh, oh and Alyssa also asked, uh, what is the best way to be flashy on a budget? And I think that's common nowadays that a lot of us are feeling that budgets are getting tighter, but we still want something maybe a little bit more than a printed flag. So what would you recommend? Um, the, our embell embellishment line, adding a little bit of um, lame or some of our specialty fabrics into a flag would be great. The um, embellishment line, like I said, you know, our rapid hybrid swing flags, you know, price point friendly. And, um, you know, add, you can get, um, we have mylar, dot, mylar dots here at um, McCormick's that have been successful for groups in the past that just need a little bit of uh, shine on their flags and they're an adhesive dot and you put them on. I think, you know, they come in packs of 100, two sizes. And um, that's just another quick way to, you know, get some shine on you. Yeah. Um, so Paul Saberer from Park Vista High School, he's asking about printing on things like lame and using lame in printed flags or using that as your base and then doing a, a embellishment on that as well. Can we do that? Yes. Um, here at McCormick's, we can print on um, different fabrics. We can print on crystal clear, um, white iridescence, which becomes the lame, and poly and organza, sorry, four different fabrics. I always forget about the organza. And they um, print out very, very beautifully. And um, I was not smart and I didn't grab those samples. Um, I apologize, but at McCormick's we can get you those. We can get you little sample swatches and stuff of what you need so you can see what you like. I apologize for that. Um, so yeah, so you can print on different fabrics and then add the lames into those. Uh, the solid lames, and in a minute we're going to go through what some different fabrics that we have and how they look into different colors. Um, you know, well, we got one color, of one color, and then we bought a bunch of our different fabrics that we have that you can look at. So yes, we do print on four different fabrics, and each one has a different look, and uh, we're kind of excited about that. It's just you know what what kind of look you're looking for. So yeah. Um, so I have a question from Melissa. What are the best ways to utilize space in the field and create a di uh, dramatic impact with the swing flags? So how do you know you picked the right size and the right shape of a swing flag in that space? Um, so to get the most impact, there's a couple options. You've got, I've had guards from 8 to 50. So if you're a smaller guard, obviously bigger equipment, and you know keep them closer together. You'll get more of an impact with them closer together. Even with a big guard, then you can spread them out more and still use, I would still use the same size flag, but you know, you could go up to a smaller flag if you have more kids and use a double swing flag. That's gonna give you um, more impact than a single. And um, I think, yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, I mean, for me, when I was doing swing flags, it was always to get a lot of color. And I always taught groups that were in that 20 to 35 range. So I always wanted a lot of color, so I went bigger. I would even do the huge, like, 10-foot 
on a 10 foot pole like runner flags and do the up and overs and things like that I think there's no wrong way or wrong answer to did I get something too big or too small too small is a little bit easier to see but I don't think you can ever go too, too big. big you're always going to see that impact and feel that on the field so okay so Kristen Miller is asking What's the biggest, uh, does what biggest design old school trend have you seen making a comeback? So what old school? Thing old there? school. Two uh, boys, one bull. I know you're old enough, so tell us. <laughs> um, old school. Um, actually, like bigger flagpoles. Like so a lot of guards are, you know, going like the six and a half foot route sometimes. And, um, or the seven foot, believe it or not, you know, that was a big, in the late 90s, uh, you know, like cadets used the bigger flagpoles and stuff like that. Um, the solid flag became very popular, and now that's kind of going out of style. But, um. We do a lot of solids in the, win yeah. in the winter yeah. season. That was that, you know, thank you, Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what we, I mean, I brought some of our flag fabrics. I bought, brought red in. So the most standard flag, you know, fabric that we use in a flag is our, you know, the normal poly. So, you know, here's the red poly, you know, your base for your flag. And then you can always add, you know, a little red lame. So that's, you know, the difference between the poly and the red. The lame's got the shininess. And then we have, you know, this is an older, the crepe, which is a little see-through has a little sparkle under the sun, under the lights, the sunlight and the, the field lights. Um, so it's, you know, a little see-through. And then we have what we have called crystal clear lame. And it's... It looks wet. It I looks think wet. that's the best way Stained for me. Stained glass windows come out pretty. See-through. It's very see-through. Um, so it's a great look if you want something soft just adds a different texture, and, and that's another good thing, texture. Different, the way the different pieces go together and the different textures play off each other, each other is a great thing to think about too. And it just, it just helps with the design of the flag. And this is one of the fabrics we can print on. Yes. So I know we didn't bring in the, but we can print on this. So a lot of darker colors read well on that. Uh, blacks, dark blues, reds, things like that, so. And then we have our metallic foil which is a very sleek um, lame it's a little bit it's got a more um, metal look it's not as soft as the um, tissue lame so it's a much sleeker you know wetter sleeker look much thicker not thicker weight wise but just a more dense weave and then we have our newest fabric that's been out for a couple years is our metallic flake. metal metal flake sorry and it has um, a hologram um, effect to it so it's got a little uh, speckled look to it and it's just another texture that you can add to the flags and there's nothing wrong see all all reds but all look very different so you're going to get a different look with every flag with every piece of fabric that you put in and that's you know part of the fun is playing with what goes where yeah um chris josie is asking if you can he said uh on metallic lame i think he means the um Iridescent. the foil the foil so show the ones you can print on again okay so we can print on the crystal clear this is probably close to what the organza would look like when you print on it and we can print on poly And we don't have any iridescent here. It, that'd be kind of like the lame, but yeah. similar. Um, and then Alyssa is asking again, Alyssa Miles, can you ever over, I think you're going to say no, can no. you ever over, uh, over lame a field? I do enjoy the shiny metallic look to these flags, but don't want to overdo it. No. <laughs> Never. Never. There's a lot yeah. of field space, right? There's a, you know, you got 100 yards, 100 yards, you know, by 50 yards. There's a lot of space out there. So, you know, I'm, you know, I love solid lame flags too. I mean, it's just, they look great. They reflect the light and they make a huge impact. On a budget. Yep. Um, Jen McCormick has kind of a, McCormick has a little bit of a different question. Change your route a little bit. Okay. Um, do you have any cardinal rules for managing smooth and seamless equipment changes? 
always think about where your equipment your your equipment change is going to happen and always think about the where do you want think about where you want to look do you want to look at the people changing the equipment or do you want to look at something else i would say you want to look at something else so if you have a way to keep a focus to you keep your eye where you want it to be and then the other people can switch the equipment and then they can switch and then the other person then you have your new um first people out with your new equipment so it's always where you want the people to look. If you want them to, look, they're gonna look at where the heaviest weight is going. So I always call it the max mass exodus. If you have 50 girls run into the back corner, guess what? That's where you're gonna look. But if you have, you know, 30 girls go slowly going to the back corner doing something, and then you, when as they're almost to the back, they stop doing something, and you have 20 kids in the front doing something, they're gonna take your focus, and then they can slowly dissipate, and then the other people can come back out. It's just all of where you want your focus. And you can get front screens and front screen covers, we sell those too, to hide when that transition's happening as well, so. Um, Becca has a question here. She says, what's your favorite kind of flag? So you can take that probably any direction, size, shape, color, fabrics. What do you, what's, what's your like go-to? I like, I like, you know, tall flag, six foot flag. And I think my favorite, I like odd shape, odd shape flags. So I like the tails. I like anything that's not normal because, you know, it gets boring. So I prefer the different looks. I very rarely, when I was teaching, used a rectangle flag. I'm not saying I never did. So if anybody's watching said, well, you used it then. No, I'm not saying I never did. But I always, you know, try to find something different, add a tail you know, add something that's just gonna make it look different. If you have to use a, you know, standard rectangle, you know, add a tail, add an embellishment. I always try to make it, give it a different look to set me apart. Um, I think we talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but we should probably recap for people who are joining on now. Um, what's your, uh, Laurel is asking, what's your best advice for choosing costumes that flatter all shapes and sizes? Think about your kids, think about what they're gonna be comfortable in, and think about your program. You know, that's that's the thing too. Are you a highly competitive program that you can take the risks, or are you, you know, a local school that does a lot of homecoming, a lot of bas baseball, baseball, football games? You know, you just, you know, is that something that is gonna be comfortable your kids performing in? You know, and a lot of times in the bigger programs, you know, we, we always tell the kids, you don't have a choice, you're wearing it. So, and the kids will come around and they'll do it. I just think you need to um, look at your kids and think about what body shapes you have and think about, you know, you don't want to do a light color nine times out of 10 on a larger person. So you always want to, you know, do the mid-tones, the darks, and you can always think of texture. Um, our printed performance wear, that is a good thing that you can do. Um, good segue we can go into. Thanks for the question, Laurel. We can print uh, on three different fabrics, like I said earlier. We can print on velvet. And you know, you can see it's an ombre. Look for it so it gets dark around the bottom. So that's one way that you can help with the shape is you know, darker on the bottom, lighter on the top. So that's our velvet. And we have our metallic, you know, great for you know, space age. And it's the same print that we had before. So you can see how the print reacts with the different fabric. Metallic, it shines. That's also a great way to get shine on a budget. Yep. You can get shine on a budget. And then we have um, just the normal spandex that we can also print on. So it's, you know, the ombre, so you can see, you know, it gets darker. So that's another way that you can hide you know, if you have, you know, larger girls that you can make it, you know, some darker on the bottom, lighter on the top. It's just, you know, don't be afraid to take some risks, though. But also at the same time, I think something I see a lot is when color instructors have a lot of different body styles or a range, they tend to go to a lot of baggy stuff. Yeah. Tunics, baggy jazz pants, and they try to cover it and hide it. And a lot, of, and a lot of time, you know, it's, it's just adding more fabric to a... To a, I'm a you know big person I don't you know and adding a lot of fabric just doesn't help so you know sometimes less is more 
and you know once again it's going back to what they have on underneath that's that's the key you always have to have to have good foundations like building a house have a good foundation and then your house will be sturdy and it's like your basics program have a good foundation and you're you'll have a great you know you have great spinners so same thing with you know color guard women have a good foundation underneath and it'll help the kids look you know great you always want your kids to feel the best that they can be yep and I think kids can wear unitards. It goes back to it again. And I yep. think just recapping again that don't be afraid to put kids in unitards because you have someone that isn't what you would consider small or can wear a unitard. A lot of performers can, and you should be able to do that. Um, again, it's just putting the right things underneath. And a lot of times we hear about our prudent performance wearers like, oh, it's a unitard that makes me nervous. Um, you can do that. We also do additional add-on skirts and a mesh that'll give the performer maybe a little bit of confidence as far as they feel covered, but it's not covering them and adding all that fabric as well. So we do have options for that as well. Um, Joshua Reeves has another good question. Um, he's doing a patriotic show, um, and he's looking for alternative equipment. Um, he says he sees other groups using creative things, but he just gets stuck on, you know, regular flag, rifle, saber. How can he mix that up? Um, you can, um, think about a mace is a good one, a drum major mace. That's a very time, you know, old school fife and drum, you know, with the mace. And then we also have rifle wraps here at McCormick's that you can make um, your custom rifle have a little bit of pizzazz to it. So it's not just the plain white anymore. We can do rifle wraps and we're all about talking about the uh, how the print on the rifle goes and where the spin spot is. Once again, we're back to the spin spot. And it's, you know, so it's ombres, colors, you can do red, white, and blue stripes, anything that, you know, makes the rifle look different. That's what the rifle wraps are good for. And you could do a T-pole as well, and you could do, like, the red and the white and get the stripes going across the field. Yep. That'd be cool, too. Yeah. Um, Becca has another fun question. She says, what is your guys' favorite show pack theme from our new show packs? I like the graffiti. Um, and I think I like the chakra. I think it's a really neat way for us to do something abstract with cultures and give that nod to it and let people feel like they can do something of that nature. So, you want to explain what show? I don't know that everybody knows what show packs are because those are brand new this year. Yes, so I'm gonna let Alan drive. Oh. <laughs> so, our show packs are a preset. Um, package that it comes with backdrops, unitards, rifle wraps, and flags that are already pre-designed for you, and you just have to pick it. So, and you can get different combinations of the things, and it just makes things a little bit easier so you're not having to go to the drawing board and be like, oh my God, we're doing a show about pirates. What can I do? Or being shipwrecked. We have a package for that. So it just makes the band directors, for a lot of, you know, the band directors that don't have a guard staff, that don't have a guard director, but have a guard and not sure what they're doing, it just makes their life a little bit easier. It's already pre-done, and you can, you know, get it. Go to our website, mccormicksnet.com, and it will be there and it's under show packs. It's really neat. So, and it makes, I think front screens are in that yeah. too. The so front screen, it's, so it's a whole package and you know it takes all the guesswork away and you can just pick your theme that you have and we're adding themes as we go throughout the season so it just if you don't see a theme maybe wait a little bit and you'll see it. Cool. Um, Kristen Miller is asking uh, more about the undergarments for unitards and what are the best things that you suggest for that? Um, I always you know like I said put the girls in a some type of body shaper. It doesn't have to be Spanx. A lot of my kids went to Walmart or Target and it's, you know, it's body shapers. Everybody sells them now. Um, most of them preferred the ones that went mid-thigh. And it just, um, it just it felt them, it kept them, it made them feel more confident when they were in something tight. And then they would wear a cotton unitard over that. And then they would finally get their uniform on. So it just helps them keep everything in place, like I said, and smooth everything out because nobody wants to see, you know, when the girls are out there underwear lines or anything like that. So it just, it just helps them feel more confident and it makes you less worried about things that shouldn't be, you need to worry about. What do you do for boys? 
For boys, um, my boy, the when I had boys on the guard, they were um, a unitard too, and they would wear um, compression wear. They would wear a compression um, sleeveless shirt as well as compression shorts, and then they would wear the new unitard over that. Dance belts? Um, depending. Some boys did, some boys didn't. Um, Amanda asked about dance belts. Um, you know, it's, some boys do wear them. They make them much more comfortable than they used to make them, so they have the full seat. So those are easy to get to get uh, get also. So, you know, a lot of guys, you know, they would just wear, you know, the compression shorts or another pair of spandex and stuff like that. So um, it looks like everybody's kind of been asking questions and we hope we've kind of helped out. I guess one question that I have is I've watched this and now I want to I wanna use McCormick's. I want to enlist in Alan in helping me have amazing flags and printed unitards and everything. What do you expect from me? How do I get that process started and with a company to start? getting someone else to put my ideas from my brain on the paper. Okay, um, on our website, if you go to McCormick'sNet.com, there is a customer information page. And if you would fill that out, we will get it. And it's taught, it asks questions like, what's your budget? Um, what colors are you looking for? What's your show theme? It just gives us a starting point that we can start the process and that we have one for flags and one for printed performance wear. And we also... And then that way we will contact you and we'll get the ball rolling. If you're not comfortable with that, you can always give us a call at 1-800-323-5201 and you can ask for me or Amanda and we can get this going and um, you know, we'll ask basically the same questions, but it just facilitates um, the process if you can um, do it on the website and we'll contact you back. Um, something else we forgot to mention in our pr printed performance where we have tops now available that um, for the band, that's the new in thing. So they range from extra, sm extra, extra small to 6X. So we have a wide range of sizes in all our pr printed performance wear, whether it's dresses, unitards, um, tops. We also do printed pants because that's, you know, a lot of boys don't want to wear um, a unitard. So we can do a matching outfit for the boys with a printed top and printed pants. And it's the same price as a long sleeve unitard, $129.99. So, and that's the other thing too at McCormick's, we are price point friendly. A sleeveless unitard starts at $99.99 and our um, long sleeve unitards are $129.99. Our dresses start at $109.99 and range to $169. $69.99 for the long. We do short and ankle length and we do briefs or without briefs on the dresses. So it's your choice and um, it's just a great thing and we're just offering a lot of neat things this year. So we're hoping that, you know, we pique some interest and if you have any questions, don't be, don't hesitate to call or email. Yeah. Uh, do we have another question? Yeah. So Alyssa is asking, um, if she's found a couple things on the website she likes as is, um, can we do um, a third flag that would go with that custom, So, which we have a lot? Yeah. I mean, if you find flags on our website that you like, we can design another flag that goes with that family and whatever your show theme is. So that's not a problem. So, I mean, here at McCormick's, we can do pretty much anything. You know, we have a great staff and great, great leadership, and we're just excited yeah, and everything's in-house for us as far as our graphics team, our sales team, customer service, and our sewing team. So once you get a hold of us, know that it's going to stay with us, and we're going to work on it from start to finish and make sure that you get the product that you want and that we would want as instructors. We all, for the most part, in the office have either taught, marched, both band directors, color guard directors. So for us, it does hit home a little bit and we know that this can be an overwhelming process and we wanna make that not overwhelming for you guys and feel like you can pick up the phone and call us and talk to someone that's been there and is gonna help you get through it or send us an email and you're gonna get a response back so I think that's the biggest thing. A lot of times people are afraid to pick up the phone. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone. Right. Don't be afraid to sound stupid. Don't be afraid to ask the question because someone's already asked it, I promise you. And we will walk you through it. We want to be a part of your program. We want to make your program as amazing as we can with your 
uni unitards, dresses, tops, flags, backdrops, front screens, rifle wraps. We do printed drum heads now, uh, decals. So like there's so much that we can do to integrate this for your show and not break the bank. So right. I guess the first thing is to give us a call, talk to Alan, talk to Amanda, call me, and we wanna help you out. We wanna make this amazing and we're at a good time right now where our graphics team is kind of waiting to go and ready to do those designs. So make the phones ring. We want to help you guys out. So. Yeah, and you know, and the best thing I think that we can say is that we have, you know, some of the best prices and the best turnaround times. Print it, anything printed performance wear is three weeks. That's right, three weeks. And that you're not going to find that anywhere else. And then our printed flags are seven days. And our sewn flags are around three weeks, so and hybrids. So those are some of the, probably the quickest times in the industry that we have right now. So if you want, if you, you know you want to get started, call us. Don't be afraid. You know, like Amy said, we're always we're talking to people. You know, <laughs> the world's gone to texting and stuff like that. Let's talk to each other. Yeah, and that's another great thing about McCormick. Sorry, Amanda, I'm <laughs> off screen. Um, we actually answer our phones. We're in an office, so. Um, we're not off-site working from home, um, and you can pick up the phone and call us and talk to us. We don't just um, work off of email. Um, and Doug is a great uh, example of our customers because he says he loves Amy and McCormick's and that we're the best. Hey, Doug, how are you? <laughs> um, I have a question, though, because you said we have the best lead times, right? Um, so why should I start now in May? Why don't I just wait until September or we July have, or August? Well, you know, in the busy season, you know, we, we do get a little bit longer for the, not much. I think last year we were running around five weeks at our peak time, but we're, you know, we're improving things at, here at McCormick's and just trying to get things faster and better and always striving as our as a company to get better and that's what we're striving for so we're shooting for three weeks throughout the entire summer it could get a little longer so if you want you need them for I, mean, I know schools are starting in middle of August now and you have that home football game you know the first week of August you know the middle of August so you need you know you want your uniform so order early get them now and strike why the iron's hot you know yep. and that's and people are gonna start to order after 4th of July so now is the time to be able to get those designs and have the the dialogue happen to get the 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 perfect design. That's that's what we all want. We want the perfect flag and the perfect unit heart. And now's the time that you can get that and have that dialogue and not feel like you're under a time crunch to just pick what you get because you have to have it. So, um get in early cuz lead times can always vary. Right. So, you know, and that's, I mean, we strive to stay to the three weeks, but, you know, sometimes it gets a little hairy and, you know, stuff like that. So I like to uh, do it early to get it out of the way and get it. And so that I know that's settled and I can just worry about teaching the kids and choreographing because yeah. you're not doing that yet. Right. And then if you're trying to design and choreograph, your head might explode <laughs> sometimes. Um, I like to get it done early, right? Yeah. And so you don't have to worry about it. It's done. You know that you can have uniforms and flags for the whole season. And especially for groups that aren't ultra competitive, going to be a way that go through November, sometimes your season ends beginning of October. So really think about that. You have August and September, and you're spending a lot of money on these products you want to have them for the full season. And to do that, you have to be ready to go ordering by July um, right. to have that for the full season and and have parents that are happy because they their kids had a costume the whole season and flags the whole season. So really take that into account and get going early. So um, this might be a good question for Amy. Um, Edward wants to know if we buy some of the stock printed flags you have will we take them back if we don't use them um so for us because our lead times are so great uh we don't have any stock flags in stock in our building because we're turning them around very quickly so anything that we print that is made to order we cannot return those so um all of these items are being made to order in theory so if anything is made to order we can't take that back so yeah, we show lots of flags on the website mm -hmm. as examples, and you can certainly get them as is, but they're not 
pre-made. Right. Now we do have stock sewn flags and that's a great example of something that if you do get them and you're not happy with them and they are brand new still in the bag, we can take those back because they are a stock item for us. So I would always recommend making sure that you ask questions, call us, see if we have, sometimes we have overruns of things. So we might have a sample that we can send you so you can kind of check it out first. Um, always ask those questions because we want to make sure that you get what you want and are happy with it. Yeah. So. Yeah, we've even done little mini right. flags yes. if you're worried about color swatches. Yeah. Uh, we did that a lot for spirit, spirit flags. flags. Because, you know, those colors are so specific with your school. And that's another thing. We do spirit flags that you can, you know, match your school logo. And then that way you have your pregame flag, your parade flag. You're not using your show equipment because then you have the people going, what did those flags have to do with anything? So, you know, you get your school mascot, your school logo, whatever you want on them. And those are twenty seven ninety nine, and we, you know, seven day turnaround yet again for the printed. We can also add the embellishments, whatever you want. We can do, you know, add some, make them a hybrid, just make them unique. Um, when you're doing a spirit flag, though, what kind of things do we need provided? Like uh, we need Pantone colors, your school colors, you know, because they're, you know, like I said, they're very particular about colors because what you think is maroon could be cardinal red. And um, so we, we need that color. We need a vector file or an AI file of your school logo so we can um, grow it or make it smaller, so however we want to do it so it doesn't get pixelated and stuff like that. And it just makes the, you know, the time go quicker. And then, I mean, if, if you can't find it, we always have ways around that, but it may you know, cost you a little more It money. costs more if we oh, have to trace, trace a logo it. or trace letters. So always go to your athletic department or your marketing department at the school. Those are the first two spots you should go to. They're probably going to have that because they're printing that on letterhead, on t-shirts, t -shirts and everything. So, yeah. Um, Keith Romandi has a question. Um, what is a favorite uniform you've done in the past? Um, we did a uniform last year for Seymour High School. Um, it was, they did a, I'm not quite sure what the show was about, but it was a purple and black and sequins, very different, lots of, it was a stone costume that we did for them. Um, my favorite printed costume that we did, I would probably say was for Concord High School in um, Indiana. They were um, a state finals last year, first time in Class A, so kudos to them. And it was a about lost and found and it just had a bunch of different textures and some different things that made it very unique it was an ombre textured with blues and purples and pinks and it was just very striking on the field and i think my favorite's the printed unit chart on the front of our catalog that yeah. we did um it's got the hot pink and the white and the x's and there's a matching hybrid in our catalog so i think that's probably my favorite yeah. that was so. a, that was not that was my, probably my second favorite it's just very graphic and it just um it said it, it made a statement. So everybody that saw it was like, oh my God, that's so cool. So Do you want to tell the funny story behind that one? How they didn't get it? Oh, they yeah. Like... I mean, we, we worked on it <laughs> and the school opted not to get it. So we're like, okay, we'll capitalize on it and we'll make it part of our spread. And it just made for a great um, focal point and you know once they saw it they were they were kind of upset that they didn't get it because they <laughs> they were like that's what it was going to look like i'm like yeah you just you got to give us a chance because we'll we'll do right by you by you that's yep. the thing and they were they were kicking themselves so <laughs> guess what they already contacted us this year and they were already doing their costumes so it's a great thing yeah so does anybody else have any other questions or comments <laughs> when is the best time to start I mean, now, now, but now, as soon as you can. Show. I mean, I know there are schools out there that still haven't picked their show and stuff like that. We get it. I've been there. You know, it's because I was always the type of person that made everything at my school, and then I finally realized I got tired of that, and you know, went you know went the the buying route. So I was a procrastinator. Now, when I had to you know buy the stuff and stuff, it's the sooner the better. Because you'll get it, you'll be happy, and if something happens, you never know, then you still have that lead time. So you you, you want to start now. You know, Get those phones ringing, and we'll be happy to talk to you. <laughs> Becca wants to know who your favorite graphic designer and the team is at McCormick's. I don't know, you should answer that, though. Yeah. You might have an uprising. Yeah, I don't know. 
I can't say. Everybody's great for different reasons. Rick's good on the hybrids. Kurt's great on the unitards. Becca, you're good at running, at running the machine. So we are great. So does anybody else have any other questions for us? Keith says keep up the great work. Um, thanks. thanks, Keith. We hope you're doing well. So, But, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. We yeah. Like I said, we just want to talk to you guys today and – and get the process going for you and get the wheels turning a little bit more on what you can do to get started early and how we can help you out um, and everything. So. Yeah. so, yeah, don't be afraid to call us or email us. You can mail off the website, mccormicksnet.com or amy, A-M-Y, at mccormicksnet.com. Make sure you add the net in there or you'll, you'll be emailing the Spice Company. Um, Amanda at mccormicksnet.com. Mine's a little long. So um, they can transfer you to me. They can send forward me the emails. So, you know, we just want to see you, hear from you. 1-800-323-5201 is the phone number. Give us a call. We're not afraid to talk. We're talkers. Awesome. So, so we're going to get out of here. We are going to pick some winners for some free gloves for asking questions and commenting and just kind of hanging out with us for the last hour. So we'll post that on our Facebook page. So keep an eye out for that because who doesn't love free stuff? stuff. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you guys soon and being part of your program. Yeah. So don't be afraid to call. We're excited to, to talk to you. Awesome. Have fun. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye-bye.